So in our last video, we looked at a library of functions. We had some important functions that we want to know. And we're going to expand into looking at what are called piecewise functions. Now, what is a piecewise function? It's a function that's defined in different pieces. So let's say I got this function here. It's a machine. Let's call it my breakfast function, f is the breakfast machine. So I plug stuff into the machine and out I get a nice cooked breakfast. So the inputs are going to be called the domain, right? And the collection of outputs over here is going to make up the range. Now let's say I split my domain into two. Or I can only plug in two things. So let's say I can plug in egg, an egg. So that's supposed to be a round egg right there. And let's say I can plug in raw bacon. So when I plug in an egg, into my breakfast machine out the other side comes a, let's say a sunny side up egg. Sunny side up egg. And let's say when I plug in my bacon here, out the other side comes uh, fried bacon. Is that good? Kind of like a brownish color. Yeah, that'd be good, I guess. Fried bacon. So the idea is you can plug in two different types of things here. Eggs, and you get sunny side up eggs. And raw bacon. So raw egg. Gives you sunny side up egg, raw bacon gives you fried bacon. Okay. So you can plug in different things. That's the idea behind a piecewise function. You're gonna have different pieces you can plug in and you can get out different pieces. So let's look at, for example, a piecewise function. Let's consider the following piecewise function. one over x if x is less than or equal to negative one and the cube root of x if x is greater than negative one. So here's the idea. Over here I have my domain. I'm going to plug stuff in to this function called f and out the other side is going to be my outputs, my range. So basically, I've broken my domain into two pieces. So I'm going to have those, I'm going to call this the red inputs here. These should be red, not, there we go. So these are all the x values that are less than or equal to negative 1. So when I plug in x values less than or equal to negative 1, the output here is going to be 1 over x. I'm going to draw that over here. I'm going to have 1 over x as an output. And then I'm going to call this other piece of the domain blue. So I'm going to take an x value. Let's say I take an x value that's greater than negative 1. I plug that in, then out the other side I'm going to get the cube root of x. So we have two different pieces that get plugged in, and that gives two different types of outputs. Okay, so for example, just for example, let's evaluate the function f. Let's say we wanted to find, for example, f of 8. Okay, now 8 as an x value. Is that going to be blue? greater than negative 1, or is that going to be red, less than or equal to negative 1? Let's go 
going to be blue, right? 8 is greater than negative 1. So what we're going to do, we're going to take uh, the cube root of our blue value, negative 8. Uh, positive 8, right? Positive 8. So we're using the blue piece. So what is the cube root of 8? The cube root of 8 is 2, right? Okay, let's say I wanted to find number 2. F of minus 5. So I have to determine if my input minus 5, my x value minus 5, is it greater than negative 1 or is it less than or equal to negative 1? It's definitely less than or equal to negative 1, right? It's strictly less than negative 1. So it's going to be a red value. So I'm going to plug that into my red piece here, 1 over x. So I'm going to write here 1 over, and instead of x, I'm going to put minus 5. The question is, what is if 1 over minus 5? Well, it's just negative 1 fifth. Or if you wanted to, you could write minus 0.2 as a decimal. It doesn't matter. You can write a fraction or a decimal. Now, uh, what if we did uh, 3? Let's say we wanted to find what f of negative 1 is. Well, negative 1, we have to determine if that input, if that x value negative 1, is that an x value, is that going to be less than or equal to negative 1, or is that greater than negative 1? It's red, right? It's going to be a red value. Negative 1 is less than or equal to negative 1, so we're going to use the first definition, 1 over negative 1, so the 1 over x definition. Well, what's 1 over negative 1? It's simply negative 1. So that's how you actually evaluate piecewise functions, and that's not too bad. But what we really want to do, we want to graph these. We want to graph these. So that's what I want to focus on now. I'm going to go back to writing down this function. And my goal is going to be to graph it. So here I got 1 over x occurs when x is less than or equal to negative 1. No, it's when less than. And the cube root of x, was it less than or equal to? Yeah, yeah, it was less than or equal to. My bad. Cube root of x. If x is greater than negative 1. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to... make a little drawing. So I'm doing an x-axis and a y-axis. Okay. This is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. And what I'm going to first do, I'm going to first focus on this red piece here. So imagine, imagine that's y equals 1 over x, right? That's what it is, right? Because the, the f of x, that's the same thing as y. So we got y equals 1 over x, and we're only going to focus on this when x is less than or equal to negative 1. So let's first graph y equals 1 over x. Put some markings here. So I'll call this uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, that's enough, I guess. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. Negative 7. Okay, I think that's enough. So if I want to graph 1 over x, that function, that's an important function that we learned about, right, when we were doing the library function. So key points here are 1, 1, 2, 1 half, 
one half two, and it did something like this, right? So I'm going to do that very lightly. Imagine, imagine me doing that with a pencil very, very lightly. Then on the other side, we'd have what? Negative one, negative one. Negative two, negative one half. And one half, negative two. I'm sorry, negative one half, negative two. And you'd have something like this. And now let's focus on the restriction on our function as far as the x values. So this only occurs when x is less than or equal to negative 1. So let's find an x value here of negative 1. Okay, and I'm going to locate my function there. My function starts like right here. And we're only going to keep it when x is less than or equal to negative 1. So we're going to keep it to the left of negative 1. So that means we're keeping this left-handed side here. That means everywhere else to the right of x equals negative 1, we have to get rid of the graph. So we're going to get rid of this. So I'm erasing. We're going to get rid of all of this. And I'm going to go back and write in my numbers. 1, 2, no. 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. Six. All right, so we have the first piece, the red piece. That's the 1 over x function. That's the reciprocal function. And we're shading to the left of negative 1. And you can also remember that there's this thing called a, an asymptote here. There's this horizontal... Oh, goodness. There's this horizontal asymptote that the red graph follows. It gets... Okay, so that dotted black line there, I should I tried to make it purple, but it didn't come out purple. Let me do it again. Okay. And this purple line, it's not part of the graph, but the red function gets close to it on the left tail. So this is going to get closer and closer and closer, you can say. Closer and closer and closer. Oh, goodness. Closer and closer and closer. All right, so let's deal with this other piece. Let's call this the blue piece here, the second piece. We're going to think of that as y equals the cube root of x. But this only occurs when x is greater than negative 1. Now, if we focus on the cube root function, y equals the cube root of x, let's remember what this was like. So you had some key points of like 0, 0, 1, 1, 8, 2. This is the cube root function. Negative 1, negative 1, and negative 8, negative 2. Which would be here. And if you were to connect these, you get something like this. I'm going to do it very lightly, very lightly. Now we have to figure out where do we actually keep this blue curve? Well, the restriction on the x value is when x is greater than negative 1. So where is negative 1 as an x value? Well, it's right here. So we're going to find the blue graph, which is down here, and we're going to just keep it to the right of negative 1 when x is greater than. So we're going to shade this here, shade this here, and shade this here. Oh, come on. This is no good. So everything to the left of negative 1, the blue graph, we're going to have to get rid of. 
Now, if you look uh, as far as the graph of y equals the cube root of x, the blue one, there should be a hole here. Oh, goodness gracious. There should be a hole at negative 1 for the blue graph. There should be a hole right here. Why a hole? Because if you go back here and look, that's only when x is greater than negative 1, so it doesn't include negative 1. But for the red graph, if you go back and look at the red graph, that f red dot fills in the blue dot. Because you're allowed to include negative 1 for the red graph, right? x is allowed to be less than or equal to, allowed to be equal to negative 1. Yeah, that fills it in. Well, that's what your final graph looks like. Something to that effect. Yeah, that's a little better. Try to draw this a little more smoothly. It's hard to draw with this pen. Okay, that's it. That is the graph. That's the function. I'll call this function f. It has a red piece and a blue piece. And in this case, they connect together. Now, all the time, piecewise functions do not connect together. They do not always connect. All right, let's look at another function. That's piecewise. Let's call this one g of x. This is going to have three pieces, x plus 4. If x is less than negative 2, the absolute value of x, if x is greater than or equal to minus 2, and if x is less than 4, and 4, if x is greater than or equal to 4. Okay, so I'm going to go down below, and I'm going to begin sketching out an x-axis and a y-axis. Okay, that looks okay. No, oh, come on. That'll work. That will work, I think. Okay, I'm going to call this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Should be enough. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. Okay, so I'm going to call this first piece here the red piece. So that's uh, y equals x plus 4. That's when x is less than negative 2. So when you think about y equals x plus 4, that's a line. As a slope equal to 1, right, that's the number in front, and has a y-intercept, which we call b a lot of times, equal to 4. So to graph this, I would start at my y-intercept, which is 4, so I'm going to do this very lightly. Imagine I'm doing this very lightly with a pencil. And I am going to go up 1, over 1, right? Because the slope is 1, so up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. 
Or you can go down one, left one, down one, left one, down one, left one, down one, left one. And then very lightly connect these. So imagine I'm doing that very lightly with a pencil. Now we have to be concerned about where do we keep this red graph. So focus here on when x is less than, that's a negative 2. So when is x less than negative 2? Well, let's find negative 2 on the x-axis. Let's find the graph, and then let's keep the graph when x is less than negative 2. That's to the left here of negative 2. That means everything to the right of negative 2 we have to get rid of. Okay, that little red mark right there, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get rid of it, so I'll just black that in. Well, that didn't work either. Okay, let me try it one more time. I'm going to make that a black mark. Okay, so pretend that red mark's not there. Now, at negative 2 on the graph, we're going to put an open circle. An open circle. Why an open circle, you might ask? Why would you ask? Well, the reason is, at negative 2, you see where it says when x is less than negative 2? Well, that does not include negative 2. So we put an open dot there. All right, now let's go on to the next piece. The absolute value of x, I'm going to call this the blue piece. The blue piece. Okay. Blue piece, where are you? There's supposed to be an absolute value of x right here. There we go. So the second piece, the blue piece, we're going to call that y equals the absolute value of x. And that happens when x is between negative 2 and 4, including negative 2, not including 4. So remember your absolute value function, y equals the absolute value of x. You have 0, 0 as a key point, 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, and let's connect the dots very lightly. Now, where are we keeping this? Where are we keeping this blue v? If you focus on the when... It's between negative 2 and 4. So here's negative 2, and here's 4 on the x-axis. So we're going to keep the graph within that window of between negative 2 and 4. That means I get to erase all the other blue. So I'm just keeping it between negative 2 and 4. Now at negative 2, I'm going to put a closed circle. Crap. At negative 2, I'm going to put a closed blue circle. I'm going to fill in that red open circle with a closed blue circle. Why? Because I was allowed to be equal to negative 2. And at 4, I'm going to put an open circle. Why? Because x is strictly less than right here. Less than 4. So that's the blue piece. So we have one more piece. We'll call it maybe orange, orange piece. It's simply y equals 4. And that occurs when x is greater than or equal to 4. So tell me about y equals 4. y equals 4. What kind of graph is that? Well, that's a horizontal line, right? y equals 4 is a horizontal line. So what we're going to do, we're going to find 4 up here. We'll put a little light orange dot, and we're going to make a horizontal line. Now the question is, where do we keep that horizontal line? Well, we're told we keep it when x is greater than or equal to 4. So let's find 4 on the x-axis right there. And let's locate our orange graph where it would pass through. It's going to be uh, right here, right? And then we're going to shade to the right of 4. 
That means we're going to get rid of everything to the left of x equals 4. And at x equals 4, we're going to fill in that dot. Oh, crap. That didn't work, did it? Let's fill it in. So we're going to fill in that open blue circle. There was an open blue circle that we're filling it in with a closed orange circle. And that's because x is allowed to be equal to 4. Okay, and uh, back here, I want to try to get rid of any other orange stuff. So get rid of this. Okay, I think I got rid of it all. I'll just redraw this. And that should be a 4. Okay, so there's my final graph. We have a red piece, a blue piece, and we have an orange piece.